Alright, so today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to set up a repeater. Uh, and the purpose for this is going to be to set up your Linux based mining rigs with a hardwire connection. So one of the downsides of using uh, some of these all-in-one Linux operating systems for mining like SimpleOS or FOS, um, these ones you have to hardwire your internet. And uh, for, for many people, you may not be where you can actually get access to a hard wire. So uh, I've gone ahead, I've got really good success with these TP-Link uh, routers, uh, specifically this one here. And I'll put a link to the description. Uh, and the reason for that is this is a multi-mode. Uh, you can use it as a main router and you can use it as a repeater. Hundreds of different types of wireless routers have a repeater function. This one is exceptionally easy to set up, so that's why I'm using it. Um, it doesn't hurt that it's only 30 bucks, so uh, pretty pretty inexpensive as well. Uh, but I'm going to walk you guys how to, how to walk you through how to actually set it up. And after it's set up, not only will this act as a repeater to your existing network, uh, but it'll also allow you to use these four ports on the back as hardwire ports. So you'll be able to mount this up on the ceiling or wall or wherever wherever you need the signal, and then just go ahead and hardwire your Linux-based machines uh, with no additional configuration necessary. Uh, so let, let me go ahead and dive in here. Go ahead and, and uh, plug in. If you're following along on this video, plug in your router, um, and then I'll, I'll kind of show you. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to have to do uh, in setting this up is actually configure this device for your use. Uh, and what you're going to want to do, plug it in. Uh, this router actually has an on-off switch. So so once you plug it in, go ahead and press the on-off switch here. And then you're going to connect one of the orange ports to your desktop or to your laptop. And go ahead and disconnect that computer from any other networks. So in my case, I've gone ahead and I've disconnected the Ethernet cord from the desktop. And then I connect this brand new router to my normal Ethernet port on the orange uh, port right here. And essentially what this is going to let me do is it's going to let me access this router without getting any con anything confused with my other router. Once you've gone ahead and connected it, go ahead and open up a web browser. And on your web browser, type 192.168.0.1. And uh, TP-Link has actually done a really cool thing. If you can't remember that address, type tpwifilink.net, and that will actually bring this page up automatically. And once you see this page, go ahead and type admin in both of the login boxes here, and boom, now I'm into the setup of this router. If you don't get this page when you set this up and you type in 192.168.01, uh, then that means that you're not actually getting a connection. So make sure that your router's on. If you've just plugged it in, make sure you wait about a minute for it to do its initial boot, so that way you can uh, actually have access to the router's firmware. Uh, and then second thing, or last thing, make sure that your Ethernet cord is plugged snugly into uh, both the port on your laptop or desktop uh, and, and the one here on the box. So once you've gone ahead and done that, uh, then we'll actually go ahead and set up what type of mode this router is in. Alright, so now you're in quick setup and you're going to go ahead and just hit next. So when you first sign in, you'll get this quick setup. If it's on some other screen, just hit quick setup here and go ahead and hit next. Now you've got three main options. The first is your standard wireless router. This is how I have my actual wireless router set up. The second is an access point. So if you have a hardwire router that does not have wireless capabilities, you can use this uh, device as an access point, which will essentially give your hardwired uh, network wireless access. And then you can use range extender, which is what we're going to use here. So go ahead and click range extender. And now what you're looking at are all of the settings, which you uh, essentially will be uh, mirroring your existing Wi-Fi network. So in the case of uh, my router, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put in the wireless name, SSID. Uh, for, for me, uh, mine is called this. And then you also need the MAC address. Now, if you don't know this, you can go ahead and click Survey, and it's going to scan for you. And it'll say, okay, which one are you? And I know I'm, I'm this first one here, and it automatically finds your MAC address, which is a really cool, uh, cool function. So from here, 
leave WD, uh, WDS mode on auto, security mode, you do want it on WPA, which should match your, your existing wireless settings. Uh, and lastly, you'll need to input your actual wireless password, uh, which is the same one that you use to hook up your, to your wireless internet with, with any other device. Okay, so now you're gonna have the network settings screen here. Uh, go ahead and leave this on smart IP. You're gonna have a couple of options, static IP or smart IP. Static IP will allow you to change the IP address of this uh, repeater. Uh, you want to go ahead and use smart IP unless you've got a specific use case which, which prevents you from doing that. Essentially what this means is your wireless router, your other wireless router is going to uh, give this one an IP address. The only downside to that is if you ever need to access this again, you'll have to look up the IP address through the uh, router settings of your main wireless router. Uh, for my case, I, I just want the, my main wireless router to assign everything, so I'm going to leave that here. Go ahead and leave your subnet mask the same and uh, click disable here on DHCP server. Essentially what this means is all of the different uh, device assignment is gonna happen through your main wireless router. Uh, so you can leave that dis disabled. And great, now it's all set. Uh, you'll go ahead and, and wait and then go ahead and uh, set this up in a new location in your house. And once you've gone ahead and set this up in the new location in your house, you'll not only have the stronger wireless signal in that area, but you'll also be able to connect your other computers via hardline uh, to go ahead and get that internet access. And we'll go ahead down into the, uh, into the garage and I'll show you how that works. All right, so after you guys have gone ahead and rebooted the router, and that's very important, make sure that in that last step it says reboot, go ahead and let it reboot uh, boot down and then boot back up. And then once it's back up, you'll have internet uh, access through here. So you take it to wherever you need your internet access, and in the background here, I've got one of my Linux machines. You can see that uh, it's currently looking for a network address. It doesn't have one, obviously, because you can't use Wi-Fi on these, and I'm down in the garage. Uh, but I'd, I'd rather have a couple of rigs down here in the garage to load bit balance the amps on my house. So it's going to go through several series of blinking lights, and it'll actually turn blue once you've got internet access. So as this one's thinking, I've got one Windows machine here, and I'll show you guys kind of how I'm, how I'm doing this. I'm going to go ahead and take out my wireless adapter on my Windows machine. Go ahead and plug that in. And you probably won't be able to see it on the video, uh, but it's currently looking for an address right now. So I'll go ahead and give that a couple of seconds. And in the interim, I'll take my Linux machine, plug this into the back as well. And this is, if, you, if you're running a Linux machine, you may need to uh, actually reboot it, uh, but it should go through a connection trial every 20 seconds. So we're going to go ahead and just wait a little bit, uh, and then once these have connected back, uh, we'll come back and I'll show you that everything all working. All right, so now you can see here uh, the internet's connected. I'm going ahead and I'm getting new work here. Uh, my, my hash rate is significantly worse on this Windows machine, which was one of the reasons I wanted to switch everything over to Linux. Uh, but this guy is up and connected. Let's go ahead and check on the Linux machine. So the Linux machine, registering rig at simplemining.net. So it's already connected. It's already checked for an update. So both of these are connected with, with uh, you know, maybe five, five minutes of configuration. So really, uh, no work at all, 30 bucks out of the box, and you go ahead and connect these things. Uh, and then I've gone ahead and got the supply of Ethernet cables. I use Cat6 cables, but really you can use Cat5 e or 5 cables uh, if, if they're significantly cheaper. Uh, but these ones only cost a couple of bucks. I'll include links to all these things in the description so you guys can check them out. And if you got any questions, feel free to hit me up, uh, and, and I'd be happy to answer anything that you guys have in mind. Thanks for watching.